Golden Blue Dude back with another video just for you. And if you're a fan of college football, and I mean you absolutely love it, then you might as well go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button because that's all we do here, videos every single day. Like it, subscribe to it, and share it around because I guarantee you, if you like this content, somebody else is going to like it as well. We also have a great Patreon page, putting a lot of time and effort into that. I will have videos on the Patreon page this week. We also have a great website that was created and designed by Joey Foster. We have eight great writers led by our head writer, Michael Walker. Special thanks to him. And don't forget to check out our merchandise store. A lot of great stuff over there. I know you'll find something that you'll like. And I was thinking today, you know, we've all made mistakes. Making mistakes is a part of life. So I, I started to think about this. Okay, so what are some of the biggest mistakes that teams, or wait a minute, conferences have made recently? So I came up with list. The biggest mistake that each Power 5 conference has made over the past few years. And I actually ranked them from the worst of the worst decisions to the bad but not so bad decisions. Coming in at number 5, the worst decision by the Big Ten. All right, this is a bad decision, but, but I don't think it's the worst of the worst. That's why I have them at the bottom of this list. I think their worst decision recently was creating or joining an alliance with the ACC and the Pac-12. Creating or joining an alliance, that in and of itself, not a bad idea. It was the fact that they joined the ACC and the Pac-12. The two weakest conferences in the Power Five, you joined to create an alliance. That makes no sense whatsoever. Unless you're wanting to have all the attention. You know you're the big dogs of that alliance. You're going to get all the attention. You're going to be the workhorse. You're going to be the flag bearer of that alliance. I guess in that case, it does make sense. But other than that, it makes absolutely no sense. I think what they should have done is create or join an alliance with the SEC and the Big 12. You talk about a moneymaker alliance. That is a moneymaker alliance. Now, I don't know all the politics that went into this. I'm just saying, on paper, common sense tells me that creating or joining an alliance with the SEC and the Big 12 would have been a much better decision than creating or joining an alliance with the ACC or Pac-12, especially money-wise. You would have made a lot more money with the SEC and the Big 12. That's just my opinion. Next up on this list, the SEC. Yes, the SEC did make a bad decision, and it was last year. This is going to fall under the conspiracy theory. I've been talking about this since it happened. So I think the biggest mistake that the SEC has made recently was having Georgia lay down for Alabama in the SEC championship game in order for Alabama to make the playoffs. Listen, if Alabama would have lost to Georgia in the SEC championship, they wouldn't have made the playoffs. So the only way for the SEC to get two teams into the playoffs is Alabama had to win. And I think the biggest blunder of this bad decision was it was very noticeable. This game wasn't even competitive. Alabama blew out Georgia. You could tell something was not right. Uh, did Alabama just have Georgia's number? No, Georgia just laid down for them. So I maybe could have bought this, maybe could have bought this if it would have been a competitive game. But the fact that Alabama blew out Georgia made it unbelievable. Not only did they win, Georgia laid down for Alabama. That's the bottom line. I mean, you look at the 2021 Georgia schedule. Clemson and Charlotte, they won 10-3. UAB, 56-7. South Carolina, 40-13. At Vanderbilt, 62-0. Arkansas, 37-0. At Auburn, 34-10. Kentucky, 30-13. Florida and Jacksonville, 34-7. Missouri, 43-6. At Tennessee, 41-17. Charleston Southern, 56-7. And at Georgia Tech, 45-0. To that point in time, Georgia had allowed a total, a total of 83 points in 12 games. And the most points that they allowed for the SEC championship game was 17 on the road at Tennessee, which they still won convincingly 41 to 17. So it's not the fact that Georgia lost to Alabama, it's how they lost to Alabama. 41 to 24? That's like five games worth of points scored in one game against Georgia. That just didn't make sense. And it's not just the statistics. If you watch the game, that defensive line for Georgia was not trying at all. No sacks, no pressure, none whatsoever. Bryce Young had all day long to sit back there and pick Georgia's secondary apart, and that's exactly what he did. So Alabama won the SEC Championship 41-24. What happened to Georgia after that? Back to domination. They whooped Michigan in the playoff semifinal in the Orange Bowl 34-11. And then the National Championship, the revenge game, whooped Alabama 33-18. Everything that I predicted about the national championship happened. I predicted Georgia to win. Check. I predicted Georgia to win by double digits. Check. And I predicted Alabama to not reach 20 points. Check. And they sacked Bryce Young multiple times. So yes, nobody will convince me that Georgia did not lay down for Alabama in the SEC championship. That is my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. Bad decision for the SEC. Not because of money. I know Alabama got in, and that created more money for the SEC. But Georgia 
had a chance to be a dominating 15-0 just like Alabama had the previous year, even though it was 2020, not 15-0, but undefeated, a dominating team say, SEC is dominating everybody. We will have one team that can wipe everybody off the map. But no, you got a little bit greedy, said Georgia, we need you to lay down. Then we can get two teams in, and then you can go back to dominating. I just don't like that decision. Next up on this list, number three, the Big 12. Their worst decision in recent memory is allowing the Longhorn Network. Now look, I don't know the ins and outs of that. I don't know if they were able to actually veto the Longhorn Network, so I don't know if they had a say in it. What I am saying is... That, that was not good for the Big 12. Not at all. And on top of that, now Texas is headed to the SEC. Look, Texas has one of the biggest brands, if not the biggest brand in the nation. I get that. But you have got to stop giving them so much power. I mean, year after year, Texas is back. Texas is back. Texas, they haven't been back for over a decade. That's a fact. And I know they do make a lot of money, but you can't let the rest of the conference suffer because of one team. Texas is headed over to the SEC the Big 12 might actually be a better conference with Texas out of the equation. I think a lot more teams are going to have a lot more opportunities to make more money. Longhorn Network was a big problem in the Big 12. It is leaving going over to the SEC, but if the Big 12 did indeed have power to veto that, they should have because that was a terrible, terrible decision. By the way, you can support Golden Blue Dude through PayPal, and right now every single donation goes towards getting us, all of us, a P.O. box so that you can send a mini helmet of your favorite team to Golden Blue Dude so I can display it on my shelving in my background forever. Now we're into the power conferences that made some really, really bad decisions. Number two is going to be the Pac-12. And I think one of their biggest blunders was not taking BYU. And a lot of people say it was because of the religion. It was because of Tier 1 research facilities. All that, you know, different stuff. Look, the Pac-12 is treading water right now. I think BYU would have actually rejuvenated the Pac-12. I mean, look at the Pac-12 schedule that the BYU Cougars played last year. Dominated the Pac-12 South. In fact, they are the unofficial Pac-12 South champs from last year, in my opinion. So yeah, I think the Pac-12 should have brought in BYU. And the mantra in the Pac-12 is, academics is what keeps us together. That's fine and dandy. You know, it is what it is. I'm sure BYU's academics isn't that bad to where you couldn't have taken them. I mean, BYU has an international brand, not just a national brand, an international brand. BYU, I'm telling you, BYU would have made the Pac-12 a lot of money. But what happened? They said, nope, uh, uh, you're not good enough for us. The Big 12 comes in, swoops them up, and the Big 12 will make a lot of money from BYU. Bad decision, Pac-12. Bad decision. That brings us to number one. The worst of the worst of bad decisions. And it is the ACC. What am I talking about? A terrible Horrible TV deal. Horrific. And it's not just the money. It's they're locked into it until 2036. So they can't do anything about it for over a decade. This is insane. Here's the revenue payout from last year. Number one, the SEC, 54.6 million per team in one year. That is incredible. And I know a lot of things go into that. It's not just the TV deal. But the TV deal is a big part of that. Coming in at number two, the Big Ten, 43.7 million per team in just one year. Again, that's a lot of cake. Number three, this one might surprise you, but it's probably because the lower number of teams. The Big 12, 34.5 million per team in one year. Now, Texas and Oklahoma are going to be gone. BYU, Houston, Cincinnati, and UCF are going to come in. I'm sure they're going to rework that TV deal whenever it expires, and it's going to be bigger because the current TV deal is going to have to be split between more teams. So that means that will be a little bit lower. So I got my eyes on the Big 12 whenever they work their TV deal. And then there's number four, the ACC. That's right. They are not dead last. 29.4 million per team in one year. Dead last is the Pac-12, 21.5 million per team in one year. So why do I have the ACC at number one and not the Pac-12? Well, it's because the Pac-12, I think theirs expires like 24, 25, so in a couple of years. That's why I have the ACC as number one because theirs don't expire until 2036. That is insane. Y'all need better lawyers. That was a horrible deal. You are not good at negotiating, and you're going to be paying for it for a while. In fact, your entire conference might end up dissolving because of that horrendous decision. So I don't know what the ACC is going to do. That, that could have really messed them up to where they're not going to exist for very much longer. We'll see what the ACC does in the near future. Anyways, that's my list of the worst decisions of the Power 5 conferences. Y'all let me know in the comments section, number one, if I ranked them correctly, or number two, if you thought of a worst decision for a particular conference. I look forward to your comments. That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on my next show.